Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. My first guest, one of the best comics uh, you're going to find around. His stand-up special, American Degenerates, is on Netflix. Starting when, next week? No, no, it's on now. On now? Yeah. Check it out on Netflix. American Degenerates, and go to at Jim Norton for everything else. The great Jim Norton. What's up, buddy? Hi, Artie. Thanks for having me. <laughs> How you doing? Good man? to see you. I love the night before Thanksgiving spread you have. This is so nice. <laughs> yeah. First of all, are you off this whole week with O&A? No, I worked. Um, I actually, uh, I worked Monday, and I, yeah. I was in. I taped a Leno piece Tuesday, and I actually flew home and did radio this morning. What an so. insane schedule! You I like have it with though. That. You do. You like oh, it because yeah. you're working and doing stuff you like. It's the, it deludes me into thinking I'm not absolutely irrelevant. <laughs> Which I am. <laughs> but like, the busier well, I am, the more I convince true, myself. That's not true. But you, you, I mean, well, so it's having a, a good work ethic. But um, and I, the little things, do you have complete control over them creatively, no. or, or as much as you want? Well, if this is a field piece, so they kind of tell me you're going to be going here and talking to these people. They're very, very liberal with what I can say, surprisingly. Right. Uh, right. Leno has a weird reputation. Like, people think, ah, oh, it's mom and pop. But I get away with more on that show than I ever did on another show, yeah. content-wise. And uh, So, no, they're pretty good, man, I mean, about letting me say what I want. I mean, and they've let me curse, and they just beep it. I did stand up at the Borgata about four months ago, and I come off stage, and the kid I travel with, uh, Timmy, he says to me, you know, Leno was in the other room, and he came by to see you. He was here for the last half hour of your show. I said, get out. I never met Jay Leno. And as a comic, you know, I'm like, wow, I'm, you know, obviously a big fan of his and all the crap that happened with Howard. It was yeah. kind of awkward, but sure. I, what do I care at this point? But um, uh, I said, uh, I, so I was actually, you know, how many, uh, you're, we've been in this business a long time. Few things get you, like, nervous where you're jaded. Yeah. I was really like, wow, I was nervous. I never met Jay Leno before. And I was always, I saw him by myself in the 80s do stand-up four times, went to go see him. And he was so amazing, like, dealing with the crowd and everything. And, I mean, I think he's amazing at what he does now, but he gets a bad rap, like you just said, for not having this edge. He was so edgy, especially with yeah. dealing with hecklers and just would destroy them, just, like, chop them up and, like, you know. And um, I, I said, I think, I think I'm with one of the media, I think, you know, and uh, you want to get dinner with them? And I was with my uncle and my uncle's girlfriend and my fiancé and Timmy. He took us all out to eat. Man, we talked for, like, two hours, and I felt like I was talking to a cousin of mine. It couldn't, yeah. have, couldn't have been cooler. He was just really nice. I, Mentioned you a little bit, you know, people we have in common and stuff. And he was like, yeah, yeah, Jimmy's really funny. And, 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 it was just it was a lot of fun, you know? I, and he's never taken a meat dinner. You know how humiliating that is? <laughs> he's never bought me anything. I get to eat in the green room, and I leave. <laughs> you, get be, you get to be on the show. But, uh, uh, yeah, he's, he's much better to comedians than people think. Oh, so God. He treats I, comics great. Uh, some guy who was just here before wrote from... Said he had they had a mutual friend and he got out of college was trying to get into comedy and uh, Leno called him at home. Remember the kid here the other night who writes for Fallon now. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, Ron uh, Ron Feynman I think. And he said, uh, yeah, you know, send him some stuff and uh, ended up using it. And he wrote for him for like a year. Oh really? And he helped him get the job over at at Fallon. Did, did you ever hear stories about that with Carlin too? A couple of guys told me Carlin called him at home that he met on the road or something like that. Did yeah. You know, I know Otto, he went to see Otto in Chicago. That's right, he liked Otto, that's right. He yeah. wanted to check him out. And um, no, I, I, I never in per I never had Carlin watch me do stand-up, which I would have been too petrified for. Right. But I did Tough Crowd with him. Colin put me on Tough Crowd right. the episode he did. Who were the other guys on there? Was, me, it, was it Nick on it? Me, Nick, Geraldo, and... Wow, what a group. Uh, perfect group for that. Man. And, and George, that was the four what guys. What a perfect group for that. Man. We were all in our, Even Nick was on his best behavior. <laughs> we, we were all so, uh, like, reverential. Like, what's the word? Rever reverential? And, like, reverential. He, no one interrupted him. It was and really you're, weird. And you're there with Colin. And, and Colin, yeah, with Colin. That's, we, a, that's a funny room, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's great to have that on tape. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and uh, but I, I had a crazy situation uh, running with him in the sense that uh, I did this uh, movie in the 90s, uh, one of these several movies in the 90s that cost Hollywood millions of dollars. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, he was the first guest on Kilbourne when Kilbourne hosted after Letterman. Okay. And um, I was the second guest. And it just shows you how sometimes like booking agents don't even know the business. Like you're gonna you're gonna fall down with how great this news is. You're following George Carlin. I'm Greg Kilborn. I'm like, no, I want to hear I'm meeting him backstage. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to hear I'm following George Carlin. And he sort of got the situation and without being a pompous ass, came up to me and said, you're going to be great. I mean, it's going to be great. And it put me such at ease. And it went fine. But he was so cool about it. And was like, he supportive? Like, I imagine he was cool. Were you on panel with him? No, he left. Oh, he left. He left. Okay. Yeah, he had to go. So, but I, I'd rather that, though, man. 
you know, my first line was he gave me a laugh. I said, uh, thanks, Craig. It's always easy to, or it's always fun to follow the best comedian ever. Yeah. You know, and that got a laugh and sort of broke the ice. But no, he didn't sit there. Rarely did that happen with that Kill Board show. I think that was more like the people left, you know. I had, I was doing a, a Leno one time and it was a panel appearance. And they kind of know what you're going to talk about. And it was doing all, I think this was an Obama and McCain were running. Yeah. And Jenna Fisher was supposed to be the lead guest. Right. But she canceled day of. So they say, look, we got Bill Maher to do it. Right. So Bill's talking about the election. On Leno. Okay. Bill's the first guest, and he's talking <laughs> about this stuff, so you're going to have to change what you talk oh. about. And comics have weird things to say about Maher sometimes, but he was so good. Was he? Yeah. As, as a lead guest. Like, he was really cool. You know how you know when the guest is freezing you out and when they're being supportive? But he, he was, he was being great. Good, good yet supportive. Gr amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a, I had a bad experience with him on Politically Incorrect in the late 90s. I did Politically Incorrect uh, on ABC. But it wasn't his fault. It was sort of like the setup was, was terrible and... Um, uh, I got annoyed with him. But when I look back at it, right. it was my, you know, I was being a baby. But, uh, you know, he gets a reputation for that. But it, it's good to hear, because a guy like that, especially when it's politics, and Leno's one of his cronies, it's not your generation, right. he could have made it terrible for you, but, it, you know, it was good. Yeah, he was fun, and it was he, was, he had a really great vibe, and I appreciate it. I think comedians tend to be good to each other when we can be, you know? Some of them, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah you're right. If they go be, if one if guy goes out of his way to be bad, that's more unique than it is common. Right. And it really makes them an a-hole, you know? I can't wait for tomorrow, though. My favorite part of Thanksgiving is just everybody going, you know, I've been good for so long. <laughs> 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 How awful is that? All I want to yeah. do is, is reenact the Rocky scene with the turkey. <laughs> well, my old manager, Peter Principato, who I love, one of the best managers ever, a great guy. At the time, he's much thinner now. He looks healthy. But at the time, I was in a meeting with him and a guy from NBC. And... Uh, uh, Peter and I were both 350 pounds at the time. And I don't want to take this meeting. It was like a breakfast meeting in L.A. And I don't know what the guy wanted from me, some stupid pitch or whatever. And no one knew what to say. So there was like a real dead silence. Who's going to break the ice? And th there's some things that a 350-pound man just should not say out loud. So to break the silence, Peter puts down the menu and goes... You know, guys, I've been good all week. I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to get the pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, okay. Just an awkward... There's nothing worse than someone, like, <laughs> making their excuse, like, externally. Like, just keep that to yourself. Right. Nobody well, cares how good you've been. We get it. Yeah. Uh, well, what do you mean you've been good? That means you didn't need a UPS truck. <laughs> Wait, uh, where do you go for Thanksgiving? Um, do you have a typical place you I'm go? I'm probably going to see friends tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, family sometimes, but the traffic sucks, and I'm a terrible family Where's member. Where's most of your family? Central Jersey and okay. by Atlantic City. By where we grew up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, eh, what am I going to do, man? I I'm the worst. I'm a what terrible... Do you mean, what do you mean by that? Why are you... I'm sure... You're going to do... do friends instead of family? Yeah, I don't know what they're doing, and I just tend you to You don't be... know what the family's doing? No. I'm just awkward and uncomfortable. A lot of people really? are like yeah. that. A lot of people What about are. you? Are you going... Well, I have a very tight-knit, like, that Italian family thing, so I'm going to family. But okay. there's times I've gone to, like, a girlfriend or something instead. Yeah. But, uh, so but you're going to my, your mom? No, I'm going to my uncle's. My oh, uncle. okay. But, why, like, what do you mean you're... About, like, people obviously, you know, they're... Like in show business, they're probably interested in your life uh, like I that, and, and, and you don't want to deal with that. No, right? all I want to do is sit down and go, look, eat. I'm filled with shame. <laughs> I don't want to talk about anything. I'm. That's what you mean by being a bad family? Yeah, I'm just right? filled with loathing and shame, and it's not artistic. It's just who I am. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. the, my next special, I think I'm, I might call it Depression Without Genius. <laughs> That's going to be the name. I picture Edgar Allan Poe if he couldn't write poems. Just an annoying guy to be here. I, uh, Jimmy Norton, back after this. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on Audience, only on DirecTV.